Albert Einstein's famous for the theory of relativity, but he actually made many other discoveries in physics, and one was the Einstein solid, which is a model for solids that explained their heat capacity. We're going to use this model to examine three things. First, what happens to the entropy of a solid at zero Kelvin, that is absolute zero? Second, what happens to the entropy of a substance when we increase the temperature? If everything else remains the same and we change the temperature, what happens to the entropy? And third, we're going to look at what happens to the entropy when it undergoes a phase transition from a more tightly bound substance, like a solid, to a more loosely bound substance, like a liquid. First, let me explain what an Einstein solid is. Now imagine that each of the black dots in this drawing is an atom in a solid. So we've got some sort of crystal structure. We have a bunch of atoms. And the green things that look like springs are the bonding interaction between those atoms. So it could be metallic bonds. It could be uh, uh, covalent bonds if it's a covalent solid like a diamond. It could be uh, ionic bonds if we're talking about a salt. It's any kind of bonding interaction. But we're imagining that bonding interaction is like a spring. So the bond can be compressed or it can be stretched. And that's going to be a way that we can store energy. Now I've only shown a couple of cubes here, but of course if we have a solid, that solid is going to extend out in all these different dimensions, forward and backward. And so if we look at a single atom, so let's focus now on a single atom. So we've got an atom here, and that atom can vibrate in the x direction, it can vibrate in the y direction, and it's kind of hard to draw on, on a flat surface, but of course it can also come in and out of the plate the plane of the of the page. It can vibrate in the z dimension. So there's three different ways that we can vibrate. If we think of this giant lattice of atoms, each one suspended on a spring in three dimensions. So we can go up, down, left, right, and forward, backward. Okay, so Einstein's insight is that we can think of each of these modes of vibration, this different way of storing energy in the x, y, and z axis, as a quantum ladder. If you've taken any chemistry, you know that if we look at the electronic structure of atoms, we can imagine if we take a hydrogen atom, we can put electrons, we could have an electron in the 1s orbital, or we could put it into the 2s orbital or the 3s orbital, which is just a way of describing how much energy that electron has. We're going to draw some quantum ladders here, and this time we're not talking about the motion of electrons, we're talking about the vibration of atoms within this solid lattice. So we're going to label this as X, Y, and Z. And keep in mind, this is a ladder for a single atom. So we're just going to pick out a single atom. Maybe I'll circle it in red here. And we're going to imagine that it could vibrate in the X direction, the Y direction, or the Z direction. And these ladders represent the amount of energy that the vibration has. So we could be vibrating in the lowest energy state, or the next highest, or the higher after that, etc. Okay, so we can use the ladder diagram to represent how much vibrational energy motion that atom has in each dimension. That's the Einstein solid model. And Einstein was able to explain the heat capacity of solids using this model. We're going to use it, this model, to explore entropy. First, let's see what happens if we go to absolute zero. So we're going to go to a temperature of zero kelvins. So we're looking at the vibrational states of that single atom that we circled in red. Let's see how many different states we could have if we're at absolute zero. So certainly if we're at absolute zero, we haven't put any energy into the system. So we expect that, I'll just use a little check mark to show where we are, that in the x dimension, we're vibrating with our lowest possible energy. And the same for the y state and for the z state. 
So we ask ourselves, what's W? What's the number of different ways that we have of arranging the energy units for that atom? Well, X has to be lowest, and Y has to be lowest, and Z has to be lowest. There's only one way of doing that. So W has to equal 1. So let's calculate the entropy. Entropy is equal to Boltzmann's constant times the log of W. The log of 1 is equal to 0. So the entropy has to equal zero. This statement that the entropy of a crystal will go to zero at temperature equals zero is the third law. So we can see that if we take a crystal down to absolute zero, it should have zero entropy. This makes entropy fundamentally different from enthalpy or internal energy in that we can talk about absolute entropy. In other words, we don't have to just talk about changes in entropy because we have an absolute reference point. We know the entropy is zero at zero Kelvin. And so it's not like energy where there's an arbitrary reference point. So we really only talk about changes in energy. We can actually say what the actual value of entropy in a substance is because we can always refer to zero Kelvin where it's zero as an as a absolute reference point. So at t equals 0, we saw w was equal to 1, and the entropy was equal to 0. But what happens if we increase the temperature? Now we know if we increase the temperature, the molecules are going to be moving faster, and they're going to be not just, uh, if they're a gas, translating more rapidly, or if they're rotating, they could be rotating. But what kind of motion do we have in a solid? In a solid, all we have is vibration. We have these atoms vibrating back and forth in the x, y, and z dimension. So if we increase the temperature, they're going to be vibrating in a higher energy state. So imagine that we add a single energy unit. So let's move this over a little bit. Let's add a single energy unit. Add one energy unit. So what I mean is enough that we can put one of these things not in the ground state. We can see we could put that energy unit here, here, or here, but the other two have to be in the ground state. We only have one energy unit to play with. So W is equal to three. If we were to imagine instead to increase the temperature even more and add two energy units, we could put all of them here and put these in the ground state. Or we could put all of them here, or all of them there. That's three different ways we could put it. Or we could imagine drawing something. I'll just draw it um, uh, with a different color here. We could imagine putting one here and one here. That would still be two energy units. And if you count up all the different ways you have of shuffling around two energy units, you would see the W, in this case, is going to be equal to 6. And so there's a general principle here that we can deduce from this, is that as temperature goes up, this just means that entropy is a function of temperature, all else being equal, if temperature goes up, entropy goes up. So if we take a glass of water at 50 degrees C, it's going to have more entropy than at 25 degrees C. Why? We have more energy units and we have more ways of shuffling those units around. So W goes up and entropy goes up. Let's look at the effect of phase transitions on entropy using this same model. So before we do this, I need to just tell you one result from quantum mechanics. And that is that the distance in spacing between these energy ladders is a function of how tightly bound they are. So if you have a very stiff, tightly bound solid, like say diamond, where the bonds are very stiff, versus a looser solid where the bonds are not as stiff, like graphite, for instance. So if you imagine something that would be very loosely bound, it would be something maybe like rubber, okay? Uh, the more tightly bound something is, the bigger the spacing between the energy levels. So so let's imagine we have a tightly bound solid versus a loosely bound 
solid. So we could, just as you use in our example, we could have diamond and graphite. So one with relatively stiff bonding between all the different atoms, and at least some of the layers in graphite are not tightly bound together. Now imagine I put in just one energy unit on terms of this scale. So this is an energy axis on all of these. If I have something like this, we can see if I only put in one energy unit with respect to you know this much energy, on this scale, that means I can only be in one excited state. I can't, I can have a W of three. I, I can either have that extra energy unit here, here, or here, but that's it. There's just W is equal to three. But if I look at this scale here, the different quantum states, the different energy states, the rungs on the energy ladder, so to speak, are closer together. So that same amount of energy, if I put it here, we can see, okay, I could put it here or here or here, but I could also put a unit here or here because these energy rungs on this loosely bound solid are only half an energy unit apart. So if we look at how many different ways I could spread the energy out in vibrational, uh, the X, Y, and Z vibration of this solid, I could see that W is equal to six. So you may, as a, as a uh, exercise, want to go through and see that if I have an energy, if I have this much energy, let's just draw it graphically, I can see that over here, that just gives me a W equal to three. The number of microstates in this macrostate is three. And over here, it would be six. And of course, that's we're talking about per single atom. All right, so that tells us something. That tells us as we go from tight to loose in terms of how stiff the bonding is, that we have W increase. And we know, just revisiting Boltzmann's equation for entropy, it's the natural log of W times Boltzmann's constant, that if W goes up, entropy goes up. So loosely bound substances should have higher entropy than tightly bound substance. So let's look at the entropy of two real substances, diamond and graphite, and see if that's true. So if we were to look in the appendix G of OpenStax chemistry, or uh, we could go to the NIST chemical web book, we could get the absolute entropies for these substances. And I should say this is at 298 Kelvin. The little degree sign here just means that under standard conditions, so we're working at one bar, that's approximately one atmosphere of pressure, and that they're pure substances. So notice that if we went from this tightly bound substance with stiff bonds to this uh, one over here, where we have a little bit less stiff bonding overall, uh, the layers between, uh, graphite's made up of layers, and the bonding between layers is actually quite weak, we actually get a increase in entropy, just as we predicted. So this is an example of a phase transition. So a phase transition in this case was between two different crystal structures of a solid. But we could also have phase transitions between entirely different states, like solid, liquid, liquid, and gas. And in every case, if we go to the more loosely bound substance, we increase energy because we have more ways of shuffling entropy units around. Uh, and it's really drastic if we imagine going to a different state because if we have water molecules in an ice cube, for instance, they're locked in a crystal lattice and all they can do is vibrate. That's the only way they can shuffle entropy unit, energy units around and generate entropy. However, if we go to the liquid state, not only can the molecules, uh, the bonds in the molecules can vibrate, but also the molecules can spin around, they can rotate. And if we go to the gas phase, molecules can freely rotate around their axis and they can also fly around. Right? So we have translation, vibration within the bonds, and rotation. So when we have more different types of motion, we have more ways of shuffling our energy units around. W goes up and entropy goes up. So entropy will go up when we go through a phase trans transition like this. The details on how to do those calculations are in other lecture videos. So wrapping this up, there's three things we've learned. First, that entropy at zero Kelvin is equal to zero. If we go to absolute zero, 
will find that there is no entropy for the substance. <clears throat> Second, as temperature goes up, all else being equal, that means that entropy goes up. So if all we change is the temperature, we will find that as it goes up, the entropy goes up. And finally, if we go through a phase transition from a loosely bound substance to a tightly bound substance, so for instance, if we go from solid A to solid B, where A and B are two different phases of the material, two different crystal structures, and B is something that is more loosely bound. We're going to find entropy goes up. If we go from liquid to gas, gas is obviously much less tighter bound uh, to each. Uh, the different particles in a gas are, are practically not bound to each other at all, and in a liquid they're held together, held to each other by IMFs. So we're going from uh, tighter to looser. We're going to see entropy goes up. Of course, if we went from gas to solid, for instance, like if we were uh, forming frost, where water vapor in the air starts to form uh, ice crystals, that's going from loosely bound to tightly bound. We find the entropy goes down. Or if we went from, say, solid to liquid, we'd find entropy goes up. So for any phase transition, if you're going from the tighter to the looser bound substance, entropy will go up.